Welcome to Security with Spirits, an Oak Barrel Security Podcast. I'm Jason. This is Ben. Jonathan. And Tony. We'll tell you what to drink while we tell you why we drink. And we're back. And welcome to the show. Tony had a little bit of a surprise for us. He actually posted the drink about a week ahead for everybody. And he said, try it. Let me know how you like it. So I'm not going to spoil it, but I tried it and it's delicious. I will note one thing that I'm using is a friend of mine. He told me that uh, this Toki Suntory whiskey, Japanese whiskey, I gave that a shot. I kind of turned my nose up a little bit because it was, I think it was like 40 bucks or something like that for a bottle. It's actually pretty good. Jonathan, what you drinking? So I was cleaning out a cabinet this evening and I found a, a bottle of Irish mead that a buddy had brought me back and... I'm drinking it right now. <laughs> nice. Yep. Just, I was like, well, we're going to give this a try tonight. So here, here I am. Ben, what do you have? Made a pit stop in my journey through the classic vaults. I went to go pick up the next one in the line and they had, didn't have it in stock. And so you burnt I the place down. <laughs> and <laughs> on the ashes. And <laughs> so I went with a old standby of mine, another drink line that i'm kind of a fan of is gin so i'm mm. trying this broker's gin tom collins and it's oh. very good nice describe to us the drink recipe tony all right our signature cocktail for this episode is the oak barrel burnout it's pretty much a standard whiskey ginger with the addition of fire <laughs> fire fire <laughs> yeah fire yeah yeah <laughs> The, the technique here is in the flaming lime shell, which is fun to say and more fun to do. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Pour some flammable bo booze into a half a lime shell and just light it up. Children, please don't play with fire without adult supervision. Children, please also don't drink without adult supervision. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Oak Barrel Security does not condone underage drinking. Please enjoy our <laughs> cocktail recipes responsibly. You can get the recipe, pictures, and even some cybersecurity stuff at oakbarrelsecurity.com. And don't forget, you can now leave us a voicemail at 234-201-0707. Give it a shot, and we'll give you a shout. And we should do a shot whenever people give us a shout. Or however that worked out. Oh man, this could be dangerous, but you tell us what to do a shot of and maybe we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> what to do a shot of and why we're doing the shot. If you had a crappy day at work, we'll be like, well, you know, there's always tomorrow or whatever. But we'll only do it if you promise to do it with us. <laughs> Well, fitting cocktail for what we'll be talking about today. So today we are talking about burnout. We kind of touched on it, you know, always because it always, it's, I mean, it's not just IT, but it's a lot of jobs, but it seems to be impactful for our IT most. And maybe we're a little bit, a little bit biased because, you know, we work in IT. But I know for me, trying to figure out the, the signs of burnout or what, how, you know, because the first time you go through it, it's, you know, it's it's weird and awkward and all that kind of stuff. And it's like puberty. No, no, I'm just kidding. So it's weird and awkward. And then once you get through it, you're, which knowing what to look for is really going to help you along the way. So you can head it off before it becomes like this big, massive thing. I, I know some of, some of my things that I look for is, uh, as I've said before, very techy. I love to be, you know, hands on keyboard, stuff like that. Whenever I start pushing away from technology, whenever I, you know, that that's usually a really good sign for me that it's burnouts creeping in. 
and I and I I love what I do. I love uh, everything tech tech related. I love helping people. So waking up in the morning and having that grumblies of like, oh, I just don't want to. I don't want to do today. That's that's another good sign for me that it's not quite full blown burnout yet. But I probably need to take a, a step back. Ben, what, what are some signs that you see that, that you can kind of head off uh, burnout before it becomes a big thing? Yeah, identifying burnout is key. I, I do agree with that. And when you learn to recognize it in yourself as opposed to seeing the external factors, you maybe be able to see them for what they are as you recognize in yourself what's happening. I know you that feeling like when you get up and you're like, I just don't want to work today or when you start to look at excessive use of time, uh, you know, time off to try to, you know, like or calling in sick, things like that, frequent absenteeism, that kind of thing. Definitely the lack of passion and doing even the things that you do and you enjoy doing. Everyone, you know, hates the break, fix, ticket issues. You know, that, that's just part of it. I don't know anyone that truly really enjoys that. But if you you start realizing like, oh, well, this actual project that's my baby that I'm working on, I don't feel like working on it. That's that's a pretty good indicator. Like whenever you even like the things that you do enjoy or, or specifically want to do, you know, start to lose that, that luster. I think that's a that's a pretty big, big sign of that you're getting a little toasty. What about you, Jonathan? I notice I start to get where I I don't have as much passion as I had before. It's almost like the day is dragging by and I'm just wishing for it to be over. But I know typically, uh, I mean, I, I enjoy what I do. I love the puzzles. I love the challenges day in and day out. But then, you know, sometimes that they finally do catch up to you that you do need to be planning a, a trip, a planning a good personal break for you to recharge your batteries uh tony you fun burnout fact the the term came into being in uh 1974 uh with a psychologist herbert frudenberger defining it as the loss of motivation the growing sense of emotional depletion and cynicism and he noticed this in mental health workers who actually became resentful of the patients in the clinic itself and i I think sort of that resentment is what really defines burnout more than just like the regular grumpiness or depression or fatigue. It's, it's, I know when I get to the point of like resenting having to interact with even coworkers that I enjoy, that's when I need to step back and, you know, remember why I'm doing what I do. So wait a minute. When, when was this? 1974. All right. So this isn't something that, that IT just came up with recently and we're like, yeah, 1974. Wow. So, or maybe IT did. Come, oh, wait, no, you said, uh, you said, uh, mental health workers, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I was just imagining a bunch of people gathered around a green screen being like, Oh, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Burnout? Isn't that what happens to a screen when the screensaver doesn't kick in? <laughs> <laughs> and wait a minute, what was the what was the guy's name again? Uh, I, all right, I'm sure I'm butchering this, but it's it's a lot of fun to say. Herbert Freudenberger. <laughs> that does sound fun to say. <laughs> all right, so if we get up to a million viewers, then I'm changing my name legally to Herbert <laughs> Freudenberger. <-ger -ger. laughs> That's that last bit you said there, Tony, with the resentment of even interacting with people that you do or your friends in the workplace or, you, you know, the people that you normally look forward to, like your team and such. That's that's something I hadn't thought about. That's um, that's something that could that, uh, maybe that we've all experienced that we're days where we're just like, oh, I just don't have the energy. <laughs> to deal and with that person why are they right. messaging me <laughs> and, and and that we may not feel it is a negative feeling we must be passing it off as i'm just super exhausted you know like yeah. like 
It could be like, I'm sorry guys, man, I'd really love to, but I'm just so tired. And that could be a sign that you, you may be approaching some burnout. Like, why is everybody being especially annoying today? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be them. It's not me, right? <laughs> They're being annoying. Right? Maybe it's you got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> So that was one of the things that I asked. I was talking to my wife before the podcast because I said that's our that's our episode. You know what what is and she's not an IT person. She is um, she is in the uh, uh, wellness like you know personal training all that kind of stuff. And it's it's different for her because so IT like I mean IT is not a physical job. I mean you anybody can tell by this. Uh, just chiseled physique physique that I have, but it's very much a mentally draining job where hers is very physical. And like, if it was a full day of, you know, like if she is burnt out, she's like physically burnt out. She's, she's like done. I don't want to do anything. I want to sit here and I want to watch TV where I do not want to watch TV. I don't want anything electronic on. I'm, I just, I want to disconnect. I want to do anything that doesn't have to do anything with electricity. I'll read a book. I'll, you know, do a puzzle. I'll play a game. I'll do something, but I don't want anything computer related around me. The old unplug. (laughs) Yep. I do have weekends where I'm like, maybe not a weekend, maybe not a whole weekend, but there's, I try to do a day, at least a day a month where phone goes away. Like, I don't touch it. I don't have a. I don't have my watch on. I don't have anything. It's gone. Yeah, I'll put it on silent. <laughs> Set it on the shelf and just don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent a great idea, and it's good for all IT people to to have those disconnect days. But I I wonder if cybersecurity burnout is is different from what you see in the rest of IT. Because it's harder to just turn off the cybersecurity brain because like risk is everywhere. Yeah. You know, I have friends that, you know, at least they get to turn off the news if they're getting stressed out or whatever. I, I don't even feel like I can do that because if there's. A, then you don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, if, there's a, if there's a threat that's targeting my industry, I, I would prefer to know about it. That's a good point. That's where it's one of the few places in IT where you actually have like people against you like like things against you around the clock yeah working in cybersecurity is is kind of a lifestyle and uh, maintaining that you know code orange or whatever it is kind of about the threats and risks that are about just your personal not only your personal self but the industry you work in and your work and your loved ones and such can be an extra point of stress and that can be hard to decompress from and and again you know every industry has their form of burnout cybersecurity is not special here but this is what we're talking about the the hazards of having a burnt out cybersecurity professional are pretty bad i mean you you think of the symptoms you you lose your cognitive abilities you react slower that's not what you want mm-hmm. yeah lose that, that creativity and ingenuity that goes into solving problems and creating defensive solutions yeah yeah i mean your your defenses are lowered so if something does pop up you can I mean, the the burnt out cybersecurity individual might look at it and just be like, "Ugh, not today." All positive. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That all the more reason to find uh, a very uh, find other outlets to to work on yourself and to bring yourself uh, rejuvenate your your passion and your and your desire to to continue on in the job one of my personal outlets i use is uh, you know creativity something creative generally like it can be you know you could be writing something you could be painting you could be you know even doing something like coding or something like that creating something 
uh, being creative cooking is another good one playing music yeah uh, having that that creation and that satisfaction from creating something or building something is a good way to lift your spirits and put some uh sound too dire but put some meaning back into what, what you do i i like that and you know it kind of it's a good counterpoint to the like shutting off devices and getting away from everything um i would say sometimes it, it, it's also helpful to to deep dive into the it stuff that you love you know maybe it is coding or mm -hmm. you know maybe it's soldering on a board or whatever just uh you know something you can geek out on and remember why you got into this yeah I, and we all work in it we probably have multiple devices and i think it's a good idea to have a device that does not link into any of your kind of daily life items like email or, or your work stuff or anything like that like have something a device that this is my leisure device so to speak that you can go to to deep dive into the topic that interests you or you know it can even be a, 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 a lab environment so to speak that that you go and do work on things that you're interested in, not necessarily maybe related to your work or maybe related to your work, but something you can get into that has all the external distractions warded off so that you can focus on exactly what you are wanting to do. You brought up a really good point there. And that's, that's one of the things that, that we, we've, we've heard about a lot, but, and especially in the, remember the pandemic hit and everybody was working from home and nobody had home offices. So they were just trying to find anywhere they could to work. One of the rules that, that, that we said, one of the rules that we said is no electronics in the bedroom. And we've just lost our family friendly rating. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> But it's, you don't want to be working on a computer or, you know, working on a computer for work in the same place where you sleep. Like exactly. that's not, it's not healthy. Don't do that. I, take your laptop to the, you know, if you have to work from home, take your laptop to the dining room, take your laptop to the living room, outside, to the coffee shop. But, but don't, don't do it. Yeah. Not, not where you sleep. That, that's a. I'm just going to let that one go. Well, <laughs> you know, coming, spinning off of that just a little bit, because uh, I had some friends that did work from home during the pandemic and then went back into the office and then they were taking a new job and it was going to be fully remote. Uh, and I was prepping them. I'm like, listen, you need to have a routine every day. You know, you get up and you, you do something that is for you. Maybe it's make coffee and sit outside or sit and read a book to kind of get your day started. And you need to find another place to work. And like, like you said, you know, work in the dining room. But then try to, you know, expand that routine where you take a break and you get away from that workstation, that room. Maybe go walk the dog, take a walk around the block. And then you can come back. And then when you're done, you leave that room. So it's, you know, you're taking off. That was one of the other things I was adding in that I was telling them was like, get dressed. You know, I, mm -hmm. even though you're working from home, get dressed that way when you're done and you can change clothes to go do whatever. It's like, it, it's that crossover from I'm no longer at work. I'm now in my personal clothes. Yep. Yeah. Cause I mean, even having a, a dedicated home office, it, it can be hard to disconnect when, when work is just like 10 steps away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you have to be have some self discipline, and you know, yes, understand your time boundaries of yourself um, for sure. And I, Ben, I like how you brought up about finding that creative outlet. Uh, I know we've mm -hmm. all probably got that one thing that we like to be creative, but then I've, I also want to toss in there like uh, being physical, getting you know we do work in it where there's not a lot of physical movement. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you are racking servers all day, nonstop. I don't know. What I was trying to get to was 
if you need to have a physical outlet, this will also help with the burnout because then you can disconnect your phone. I know a lot of people like to take their phone to the gym and listen to music. I've tried to get where I don't even do that and I just leave the thing in the car. That way I'm fully disconnected and even if it is just for an hour, uh, it, it makes a big difference. It's like I'm able to really recharge and clear my head of whatever's going on at work or anything like that. I say I, I can make an argument for uh, doing things like having a just a basic MP3 player if you want music. Yeah, something yeah. Something that doesn't get your email, doesn't get your texts, and doesn't you know isn't something you can surf the web on or whatever. You know, just something that straight up plays music. Pull out that twenty-year-old iPod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Zoom, baby. Yeah, oh Zoom yeah, all, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> But like legit to the larger point do take care of your health like we joke yeah. about that because we're sitting around here drinking but you know make sure to drink some water occasionally too get up and move your body like get some real sleep you know that there's that sack of meat in your skull that needs everything else in good working order too Ah, uh, you beat me to it. I was going to say, even though this is a security with spirits and we we start our, our podcast off with a drink, for me, this is my, it, this is not an everyday occurrence. This is a, this is my treat. I get to hang out. I get to do the podcast. I get to have a drink or two. It's not, it, having a bad day at work and hitting the bottle is no way to live. <laughs> oh, very true. Uh, I'm, gl- I'm glad you made that point, Jason. <laughs> yeah, but staying hydrated when you, if you do work at the office or work in your home office, you know, you can forget to get up and use the restroom or whatever. And yeah, it's... yeah. You can, you can balk all you want. And I know there are knockoff versions and everything, but man, go get yourself one of the ridiculously large, like 40 ounce Yetis or whatever. And, oh, cold drink all day long or for me it's like all hour long but yeah i drink a lot of water so some of the nuggets we have to share treat burnout as as you would treat any other threat and it's best to be proactive so find a healthy habit to to go out and and do unplug don't hit the bottle try to try to stay healthy drink some water take some take some walks disconnect but don't disconnect from your social life friends are you know friends are there for a reason they you know it, it really is uh it really is good to talk with them and and just kind of share and it'll it'll make you happier thank you everybody for listening hope you enjoy it please stay tuned for the next one and until then this is jason this is ben jonathan and tony bye bye be healthy everybody. fire fire <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>